VFX is of course an acronym that stands for visual VFX is shorthand for visual effects. VFX artists in games are responsible for things like sparks, bullets, blood spurts, splashes, lasers, clouds, magic, light beams, fireballs, sword swipes, and tons of other stuff. It's an art form that requires one of the most diverse set of skills out of any in the game development process. And we're gonna learn all about it in this video. All right, let's go. Visual effects in games run real time, which means they have to be created much more efficiently than the pre-rendered effects often found in film and cinematics. So a lot of thought and creativity has to go into how real time effects are built. Keeping all that in mind, let's find out what the standard approach is for making a real time visual effect. There really is no standard approach to making a visual effect. I mean, I might make the same effect using camera-facing cards, meshes, trails, or whatever. There's an infinite number of techniques and tools at my disposal. As a visual effects artist, really all that matters is that at the end of the day, the effect is completed. But how I get there is really gonna vary. Every effect is a new challenge. Every effects artist handles that challenge completely differently. Whoa. That must mean that real-time VFX are really on the cutting edge. Do people still say cutting edge? Even though the field is still evolving, we can still break down some of the common techniques and methods used by effects artists. For instance, we know effects are generally built inside game engines, like Unreal or Unity, and they're generally made using particle systems. A particle system consists of an emitter. An emitter is basically an invisible point in space that can fire things like sprites and models into the air. By manipulating the options of a particle system, a VFX artist can make something as complex as a stream of water that reacts to gravity and collides with objects. Or they can make something as simple as a single image that just sits in one spot. A common effect in a game is a projectile, like a fireball. Let's find out how an effects artist might build it. A fireball has three parts. the primary, secondary, and tertiary reeds. The eye follows each of those in order. The head of the fireball is the primary reed, so it needs to catch the eye first. To make that stand out, you'll need something that draws the eye, like a bright glow texture on a camera facing card. From there, you can surround that glow with a mesh using half of a sphere. Have an animated fire texture scroll across that mesh. This will help it feel like it's in motion and burning brightly. Now you've established your primary read, it's time for thematic details to really sell the idea of fire with your secondary read. You can add a ribbon coming off of the head of the mesh. That ribbon can be composed of one texture that tiles from left to right. That texture is going to scroll across a ribbon that emits off the head of the fireball. Finally, that tertiary read. Add some sparks coming off the fireball. The sparks are less important visually than the head and the tail, so make sure not to add too many or they'll steal the focus and muddy up the clarity of the effect. The tertiary additions are lower priority shapes that support the theme of the whole projectile. And that's just one way to make a fireball. Now I wanna make fireballs everywhere. But showing some restraint is really important when making VFX for a game. It can be tempting to make every effect big and flashy with explosions and lightning bolts and magic sparklies filling the screen. But the role of a VFX artist is to communicate gameplay. If you pack too much awesomeness into every effect, then they won't stand out from one another. It all boils back down to creating clear contrast. Because if you make every effect epic and loud, nothing will be epic and loud. So let's learn how VFX artists use shape, color, and timing to establish clear contrast and visual hierarchy. And for a more general overview of contrast and visual hierarchy, you can check out our first video in this series. 
Intro to Game Art. Let's talk about shape language. Square, 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 square. Circle, 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 circle. Triple sword! Visual effects are made up of shapes. They could be a collection of light rays, spheres, stars, squares, or just a long straight line. Really, they could be any shape or collection of shapes you could think of. Creating a shape language means that you standardize the use of certain shapes for certain things across the entire game. But why is that so important? Shape language is really important when there are lots of different effects in a game. If you take League of Legends, for example, there are hundreds of different effects and they all do different things. A consistent shape language helps us understand what an effect does, like using plus signs for health, protective circles for shield, or spiky angular shapes for damage. Especially when the colors of different effects are similar, shape language will be key in setting them apart. Color is a huge topic all by itself. When it comes to effects, it isn't always obvious what colors to use. I mean, what color is wind? Oftentimes, choosing colors boils down to what you're trying to communicate with your effect. You can use colors to show what team you're on, like using red versus green lasers in Star Wars. Or the color of effects can show what kind of damage you're dealing, like the element-based spells in Magicka 2. The colors of your effects can also set an emotional tone, like the violent, super-saturated fire of Mad Max. But what about when a game has hundreds of effects? Like League of Legends. You have to be careful not to put too much color into an effect. It is easy to go crazy with the colors. I like to choose an analogous color to the model. For Yasuo's wind wall, I use a light blue. For Star Guardian Janna and Sacred Sword Janna, we use a pink for the wind effect. Tying the effect color to the model color helps the players to easily identify who is casting a spell. A huge part of being an effects artist is editing the speed and timing of the various components of an effect. Let's take a look at the overall timing of an explosion. It's mother timing time. If you look at an explosion, essentially it's just an area, a circle that gets bigger and it reaches its maximum size and then that's the end of the explosion. So if, you, if, if it was linear, it just feels like but if you add some timing to it, like changing it, how fast it gets to its max size, so that sounds like So you get that kind of energy where it slows down as it reaches max size, but it gets there really, really fast in the beginning. And you can add some interesting timing to the buildup to an explosion as well. Good sound example. All right, to wrap up, VFX is clearly a very complex art form. Every effect can be made in thousands of different ways, and there's tons of technical and artistic principles to understand. It can all seem pretty overwhelming, but don't let that stop you if you're interested in it. The games industry is always looking for more VFX artists, and the craft itself is always evolving, ready for new innovators to take it to places that no one's even thought of yet. But enough from me. Let's hear from the VFX artists themselves. If you want to start to learn effects today, I recommend you to go to YouTube and find particle tutorials that will make you start learn from the very, very basic. First thing you can do when you want to start making visual effects is have a good cry, because it's a long way up the hill to just get OK. Try to find a lot of reference and take a look at it very, very closely. That will help you in the wrong way. And if you really want to get good at timing, you can take a big rock and go to a still lake and just throw rocks in the lake. Because there's that, that awesome where things just take a second to actually hit, and then there's a splash. And that's, that's like the fundamental, you know, epic timing moment that all explosions use. In all honesty, this is going to be information overload. You're going to be learning all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of resources out there these days that you can lean on. There's the forum, uh, realtimevfx.com. We've got a Facebook group. We've got a Discord group. 
there's not a lot of formal education centered around real-time visual effects. So plug into the community, we're there to help. You can also get um, a book by Joseph Gilland called uh, Elemental Magic, and there's a few volumes. It's all hand-drawn, and you open the book, and then that's when you realize I told you to cry ahead of time, because that's what makes you cry when you realize how good it is. I'm done. OK. <laughs> Find that one thing, that one starting point, where you want to kick off from and build off of that until eventually you widen out your skill set to be a full-fledged generalist, sort of the effects artist. But I like to start small at first. When I was very first starting out in the uh, effects industry, I applied for an internship, was super pumped, made a whole unique demo reel, and I got rejected right away. <laughs> and it was super depressing and super scary, and I didn't understand why, but I would definitely encourage you, don't, don't stop there. There's always going to be, you know, other opportunities, other adventures for you to embark on. So if one door closes, don't look at that as, oh, oof, that's it, that's the end of my journey. Always, always pursue other options. Utilize the resources you have around you, whether that's websites, friends, teachers, whatever you can get your hands on to, you know, pursue your dreams. <laughs> Do your best because, you know, there are always going to be opportunities, whether it's now or the future.